see you again. Nice to see you, Stephen Colbert. Always, always a pleasant visit from Gail King. This is my terror face, though. That's your terror face? Yes, I'm, I'm really... Uh, this, this fake bomb stuff or this bomb... Yeah, the real bombs that just didn't go off. Yeah. Well, that, rate, that begs the question. Is the person behind this just incompetent, or are they just trying to scare us? If they're just trying to scare us, mission accomplished. I'm not kidding. I just said to the driver on the way over here, are you worried? He goes, yeah, I am worried. I am worried. You're not worried. This, you clearly don't have a worried face. <laughs> look, look at him. He clearly doesn't I, have a worried face. Gail, I'm America's sweetheart. What do I have to worry about? <laughs> Everybody loves me. Everybody loves me. But seriously, Steven, I'm going to hang out moment. with you. You should see me looking all around when I walk out the building. I am not kidding. But seriously, but in general, so there's there's the there's the uh, the emotional effect it has yeah. on anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, uh, people who have been critics of, uh, of the president who might be targeted by something like this. Know anybody like that? Mm, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. But but. And but... I'm not even a critic, and I'm worried. I'm not even a critic, and I'm worried. Listen, it's not our job to criticize or make an opinion. We just give you the facts and let you, the audience, decide. So I don't even call. Myself a critic. I didn't call myself a critic, and I am worried. Well, the funny thing is, the president himself sees all media yes. other than Fox News yes. as uh, as a natural critic. Yes. Because if you report facts, yes. you are almost automatically calling him out on a lie. Yes, I know. I, yeah. I, I, well, well, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> You don't mean to. to be... You don't mean to, but by valuing facts, does... you're you're devaluing his message. It does seem it does seem to be though that if you do a story, factual that he doesn't like, you are labeled uh, fake news media, and that is very An enemy of and the people. Yes, enemy of the people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What what does it feel like? Um, I'm sure this has happened to you in the past, and certainly it happened to CNN, um, which is right around the corner yeah, here yeah. Uh, in in New York. Uh, when the, the news media itself becomes the story. Yeah. Because that's, that's supposed to be the sort of thing that reporters, journalists avoid. Tell I, the story but not be the story. I was going to say, I try to go my whole life, Stephen, and never be the news story. And I mean this very sincerely, but lately, you know, we have found ourselves, members of the news media, you know, Megyn Kelly today is a story. We have the whole Me Too movement, that's a story. I try to go my whole life and never be part of the story. But I just think that's how it is, and it's our job to report that, too. Even when we're the story, it's our job to report that too. Hard to be objective. As difficult, though. as difficult as it may be. Hard to be objective. Hard to get your emotions out of that when you're the story. Well, you know what I think? I think everybody sitting on TV that you watch has an opinion. Mm -hmm. They have an emotion. You know, and sometimes I'm, I'm biting the inside of my cheeks so that my emotion doesn't come out because I want to say, this is freaking crazy. But, it, but that's not my job to do. But yeah, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. Speaking of freaking crazy, you... <laughs> You brought up the Megyn Kelly story just a moment well, ago. Well, because it's a story today. Yeah. It's a story today, and it, I, if, it, I think she's left NBC. Is that the story? We don't know. So it, it has not been confirmed. There are all sorts of rumors. There's all sorts of speculation. Mm -hmm. I suspect that before this week is over, I think that, you know, I don't think she will be at NBC, but I, I do not have anything to report of that at this time. But it, mm -hmm. let's just say this. It's not looking good for Megyn Kelly. Mm -hmm. I will say that. What did, you, what did you make of her initial statement and then her apology? You know... Listen, I have blackface 24-7, so it is never an issue for me. I thought, I thought her, her Andy Lack, who runs NBC, summed it up very nicely when he said, you know, it's a very unfortunate thing. I know Megyn Kelly. Mm -hmm. I happen to like Megyn Kelly. She and I, Stephen, went to the Kentucky Derby two years ago, and we bonded. I think she's a very smart cookie, very smart at what she, did, what she does. But I think she clearly stepped in it. She made a terrible mistake. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised that she would make a mistake of that kind. Right. But it she's seems very like an, smart. She's an attorney. She does seem to be a smart yeah. person. But she it is seems smart. like an odd cultural cul-de-sac yeah, to I have agree. grown up on that the, that the conversation no, that agree. blackface is bad never drove by no, your no, house. No, 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 no. I agree. I agree. And I didn't like it when she said Santa Claus is white. She's had a couple of things. And Jesus yes. is white. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. No, so she has said a couple of things. Sure. She's said a couple of things. Couple three. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I never wish bad on anybody. I don't. I just... I believe that. I don't. I believe I don't. that. I'm not I a Pollyanna right. girl. I'm, I, I'm not that. But I do feel that this is a rough time for her. Well, the midterms are two weeks away. Yeah. Uh, you know, the feeling... Yes. The feeling, you, I'm you, excited you, about that, you, though. But you feel a national tension. Well, happening. I feel a national tension, and I feel that this is a midterm unlike any other. You know, for most people, we don't really pay... Well, I don't say uh, 
the, I'll say the public, we in the media pay attention, but the public thinks midterm, uh, no big deal. This is a very different time. Normally one side or the other is amped up about the midterms. This time you've got both sides, Democrats and Republicans that are saying, we got to get to the polls, we got to get to the polls. And you know what? You do have to get to the polls. Yeah. Sure, you have to You vote. have got to get to the polls. You have to vote. It's going to be a long day. Yeah. Aren't you guys live? Aren't you guys live that day? We are live. We're, live. we're going to be brought. We're actually being alive all day, but we're only going to broadcast the last hour. <laughs> now, you well, guys literally are all day, right? Oh, what are you so guys we'll doing? So we'll be on in the morning from seven to from seven to nine, and okay. then you know we'll go to the West Coast. So sometimes you sure. know, you go live on the West Coast. Sure. Then we come back nine o'clock at night, and we're there till two o'clock in the morning. How do you, with an hour we'll break, with an hour break people. in the middle, because we're on. Yes, middle, that's yeah. right, that's right. But you have the ability to break in. That's one of the things that CBS News is going to be able to break into my show. I think you are being, <laughs> yes. Gail's being given a big red button just to yes. hit, and it breaks right into the middle. I'm, say, I'm tired of him. Mom, let's get in. <laughs> but, there, you know, the midterms are really very exciting. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. There's a lot at stake. This is sort of like a, a philosophical choice this year. Yep. It's, a, it's sort yep. of a, from my point of view, you have an opportunity to order, to, to, to continue on, on the right. You have an ability to continue the... Um, uh, the, the Make America Great Again agenda and, and uh, on those in opposition to the president. It's sort of a brushback pitch to authoritarian tendencies. Yeah, see, but I have always thought America was great. When you go and you travel around this country, <laughs> travel around the world, travel around the world. And when you come home, there is nothing like the United States of America. So but you it'll realize be that you, to you just took sides without meaning to. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you I, did. No, I did not. No, I did not. You're saying that make America great again is a meaningless statement. Nope. How dare you? <laughs> nope. How dare you? I said to you, Stephen Colbert, America's always been great, and I still stand by that. I agree with you. I agree with you. So, how do you how do you keep the energy going? If you're up, if you're like doing the seven, you're up at four for the seven o'clock, and you're on till three o'clock in the morning. Stephen, drugs. drugs. You got some of no. the high speed chicken feed? What are you doing? No, no, no. You know I. I am one of these people that I am so excited that I get to be part of the team that's going to bring you the election coverage. That's yeah, a privilege. Yeah, I, I do think that. I do think that. I'm looking at your eyes. I don't know if you're making a joke, but I do think it's a absolutely privilege. Absolutely not. Having any, any show where you get to talk to American people is a yeah, privilege. I, I absolutely agree yeah. with you. And, you know, I, I just hope that when the night comes, I know we'll be ready. Mm -hmm. We've got a first class team. We're going to be all over the country. And mm -hmm. I just look forward to that. Mm -hmm. But listen, the. Getting off at 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 or 3. It's like when the election came 2016. We're there going, oh, this is going to be an early night. The pollster said, don't have to worry. We're gonna, probably going to be done by 11. Mm -hmm. We he'll were there till... He'll concede by 11.15, <laughs> yeah, just to it'll, say it'll face. be done, yes. Mm -hmm. And 3 o'clock, we were still there. Mm -hmm. We were still there. So, you know, I now think you don't know what's going to happen. Nobody really knows what's going to happen election night. Coming up, in oh, other than the Russians, but everybody else is. <laughs> everybody else is in the blank. You, what races? Uh, obviously, you, you being an actual journalist, you're, you're following these races very closely. Texas, what ra Texas, that's yeah, the that's a big one races. for you. The, the senators' race, versus... the senators' race in Texas. I'm yeah. very interested to see yeah. how that's going to go. Yeah. And the governor's race in Georgia, where Stacey Abrams has a chance to be the first black governor. Mm -hmm. Now, I interviewed her this summer. I interviewed her this summer. There was something going on at Martha's Vineyard. She was on a panel that I was doing, and I was so impressed by her backstory, where she came from, why she wants to do what she does. Mm -hmm. And you know, they had that. They have that issue of voter suppression there. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I just do you, like think, all you don't think it. it's you don't think it's uh, I mean, I, I believe it's voter suppression, but yes. I'm allowed. Uh, you don't think that's a matter of opinion anymore? You think it is definitely voter suppression? It appears to be voter suppression. Because we, we Kemp, went... who is the, the, the Secretary of State, yes. who's also running, but as Secretary of State controls exactly. the election, he says, I'm just enforcing the law. Exactly. But you go down and you talk to the people that say, look, this is what happened to me. We did a story about people who said, my vote was, 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 was cast away. I went down there. I mean, so it's not like I'm just making this stuff up. We've talked to people who have said, this is what happened to me. So it, it's a it's a it's a very interesting story. I want to see how that's going to play out. You're a Taylor Swift fan, I know. Oh, I love her. Yeah, I'm. I I I, I I'm second in, I've been to in my three... love of Tay Tay. And <laughs> are you been, surprised I've been to, to three, see her? But you know, this is the thing, Stephen. I've been to all of her concerts, and I'll go and get pe out. Really? And people say, yeah. People say, what are you doing here? I go, I like Taylor Swift. I know all the songs. I think she's terrific. I've liked her from her first from the first Love Story album. Oh. 
It's a love story, baby. Just say yes. Were you surprised that Romeo she endorsed? Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I was surprised. Were you surprised that she endorsed? I was surprised that Taylor took a stand this time because she has gone her whole, her whole career staying out of politics. It's like what Michael Jordan said once, that he never took a political stand because he said, look, Republicans buy my tennis shoes too, so I'm staying out of it. Taylor Swift has made the decision that she was staying out of politics. I think what she was seeing was becoming very uh, troubling to her that she decided to encourage people to get out and vote. And it made a difference. And when you look at the millennial, the, mil the millennial population, hi, all the millennials, you guys represent, yeah, we love the millennials. They are the biggest voting block, but only one out of five are voting. So Taylor is the one that can reach them. So I thought it was great that she's encouraging people to vote. Do not break Taylor Swift's That's heart. That's right. That's right. You like her too. It's been broken too many times. <laughs> Yeah, she but you'll get a, a song. song about you. <laughs> you'll get a song out of it, yeah. Okay. Uh, we have to take a little bit of a break. Okay. Please don't go away. We'll be right back with more Gail King. Stick around, everybody.